أصحاب السعادة الضيوف والكرام السيدات والسادة ندعوكم للجلوس في مقاعدكم حفل الافتتاح على وشك البدء يرجى تحويل أجهزتكم المحمولة إلى الوضع الصامت وشكرا Your Excellencies, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen We invite you to take your seats as the opening ceremony will be starting shortly Can we please ask you to also to switch your mobile devices to silent? Thank you أصحاب السعادة الضيوف والكرام السيدات والسادة ندعوكم للجلوس في مقاعدكم حفل الافتتاح على وشك البدء يرجى تحويل أجهزتكم المحمولة إلى الوضع الصامت وشكرا Your Excellencies, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen We invite you to take your seats as the opening ceremony will be starting shortly Can we please ask you to also to switch your mobile devices to silent? Thank you
أصحاب السعادة الضيوف الكرام السيدات والسادة ندعوكم للجلوس في مقاعدكم حفل الافتتاح على وشك البدء يرجى تحويل أجهزتكم المحمولة إلى الوضع الصامت وشكرا Your Excellences, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen We invite you to take your seats as the opening ceremony will be starting shortly Can we please ask you to also to switch your mobile devices to silent? Thank you. Esteemed guests, for simultaneous translation, kindly tune into the following channels on your devices. For English, Channel 1, for French, Channel 2, Russian, Channel 3, Spanish, Channel 4, Chinese, Channel 5, Arabic, Channel 6, Hindi, Channel 7, and Portuguese, Channel 8. أصحاب السعادة، الضيوف الكرام، السيدات والسادة، ندعوكم للجلوس في مقاعدكم، حفل الافتتاح على وشك البدء، يرجى تحويل أجهزتكم المحمولة إلى الوضع الصامت، وشكراً. Your Excellencies, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, we invite you to take your seats as the opening ceremony will be starting shortly. Can we please ask you to also to switch your mobile devices to silent? 
Thank you. Your Highnesses, Your Majesties, Your Excellencies, esteemed guests, welcome to the opening ceremony of the World Climate Action Summit at COP28. We are pleased to welcome you to the Al Waha Theatre at Expo City, Dubai. Kindly take your seats. Ashabu Sumu, Ashabu Jalala, أصحاب المعالي والسعادة الضيوف الكرام مرحبا بكم في حفل افتتاح القمة العالمية للعمل المناخي في كوب 28 يسعدنا أن نرحب بكم في مسرح الواحة بمدينة أكسبو في دبي يرجى أخذ مقاعدكم
Your Highnesses, Your Majesties, Your Excellencies, Esteemed Guests, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Khuloud Al Adiyat, and welcome to the opening ceremony of the World Climate Action Summit at COP28. What you just saw, the drum rhythms of Al Ruwah and chants of Al Nadba are the traditional calls to gather from our Shuhuh tribe of the Emirate of Ras Al Khaima. We have heard the call and united, and now we must act. As we come together for a future of sustainable flourishing, it is my great honor to introduce the President of the United Arab Emirates, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan. أصحاب الجلالة والفخامة والسمو أصحاب المعالي والسعادة معالي الأمين العام للأمم المتحدة الحضور الكريم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أرحب بكم جميعا في دولة الإمارات العربية المتحدة وفي مؤتمر كوب 28 وأشكركم على حضور هذه القمة يأتي اجتماعنا اليوم في وقت يواجه فيه العالم تحديات عديدة ومن أهمها تغيير المناخ وانعكاساتها التي تؤثر على جميع جوانب الحياة الحضور الكريم دولة الإمارات لديها سجل حافل في العمل المناخي لقد قمنا على مدى العقود الماضية ببناء قدرات في الطاقة المتجددة النظيفة ووضعنا مساراً وطنياً للوصول إلى الحياد المناخي عام 2050 والتزمنا بخفض الانبعاثات بنسبة 40% بحلول عام 2030 واستثمرنا بما يقارب من 100 مليار دولار وتموين العمل المناخي مع التركيز على الطاقة الجديدة والنظيفة كما نعتزم باستثمار حوالي 130 مليار دولار إضافية في السنوات السبع القادمة إن شاء الله حضورنا الكريم لقد عندما التزمنا باستضافة كاب 28 التزمنا أيضا بجمع العالم لكي نتحد ونعمل وننجز ونعمل على مست... على تسريع انتقال العالم الى النمو الاقتصادي المستدام لطالما كان نقص التموين من اكبر العوائق امام تقدم العمل المناخي العالمي لذلك يسرني الإعلان عن إنشاء صندوق بقيمة 30 مليار دولار يسرني الإعلان عن إنشاء صندوق بقيمة 30 مليار دولار للحلول المناخية على مستوى العالم والذي تم تصميمه لسد فجوة 
التمويل المناخي وتيسير الحصول عليه بتكلفة مناسبة كذلك يهدف الصندوق إلى تحفيز جمع واستثمار 250 مليار دولار بحلول عام 2030 حضور الكريم قبل أن أختتم كلمتي اسمحوا لي أن أروي لكم قصة قائد آمن بحب الأرض واحترام الطبيعة وصون مواردها وعمل يد بيد مع شعبة لرعاية هذه الأرض الطيبة مدركاً أن الثروة الحقيقية للدول تكمن في أبنائها وإنجازاتنا اليوم تشهد على عمل بناء مستقبل أكثر إشراقاً إن شاء الله أيها السادة إنه الوالد الشيخ زايد طيب الله ثراه مؤسس الدولة رمز حضارتها وباني نهضتها وصانع ماضيها وحاضرها ومستقبلها شكرا أصحاب الجلالة وأصحاب السمو والفخامة الحضور الكريم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله نحن نرحب بكم جميعا في بلدكم دولة الأمارات ونرحب بالوفود كلها اللي حضرت من أجل مؤتمر المناخ نحمد الله ونشكره على ما أنعم علينا وحبانا بنعمة الأرض حقيقة نحن بالنسبة لنا في دولة الأمارات ما يعتبر موضوع حماية البيئة مجرد شعار بل هو في الواقع جزء لا يتجزأ من تاريخنا وتراثنا وحياتنا كنا ولا زلنا من تزمين بمبدا التعايش بين الانسان والطبيعه عاش ابانا واجدادنا على هذه الارض وتعايشوا مع بيئتها في البر والبحر وادركوا مدى الحاجه للمحافظه عليها وأن يأخذون منها قدر الحاجة فقط ويتركون فيها ما تلقى فيه الأجيال القادمة مصدر للخير والعطاء 
والمعيشة ومثل ما عملوا أجدادنا وأسلافنا نحن اللي نعيش الآن فوق هذه الأرض الطيبة مسؤولين عن الاهتمام ببيئتنا وطبيعتنا وواجب علينا واجب الوفاء لأسلافنا وأحفادنا اللي من بعدنا على حد سوى بتعيش الأجيال القادمة في عالم يختلف عن عالمنا اللي اعتدنا عليه لهذا علينا أن نعد أنفسنا وأولادنا للعالم الجديد حماية بيئتنا والمحافظة عليها هي مسؤوليتنا جميعا حكومات ومنظمات وأفراد ولكن على الحكومات هي اللي تبادر وأنا أدعوكم وأشجعكم اليوم أنكم تعملون الهدف واحد تعملون للأجيال القادمة وتحققون اللي فيه مصلحة لهم وكذلك أدعو العالم أجمع أن ينتهز الفرصة في اجتماعهم هذا في بلد السلام والتسامح للتعاون ومد جسور المحبة ونبذ الخلافات والتوصل إلى اتفاق يروي الجميع ويعيد العالم إلى مساره الصحيح ونمشي قدم للمستقبل المصلحة الأرض واللي عايشين على الأرض ونعمر الأرض المصير واحد والحرص واحد والمصلحة وحدة والسعادة كذلك وحدة وفقكم الله والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله is that despite all the effort that's been made here, things are going in the wrong direction. We are in the fight of our lives and we are losing. There are too many things dividing our world at this moment. We are heading in the right direction, but nowhere near fast enough. Whether it will be enough will define this summit.
Let us now introduce a leader whose stewardship epitomizes the ideals of unity, diplomacy, and progress. Ladies and gentlemen, the Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Antonio Guterres. Your Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayan, President of the United Arab Emirates. I want to express my profound gratitude for the wonderful hospitality that we are enjoying in Dubai from the government and the people of the United Arab Emirates. COP28 President Dr. Sultan Ahmed Al Jaber. I want to congratulate you on the positive start of the COP with an expeditious approval of the agenda and the landmark operationalization of the Loss and Damage Fund. Congratulations. <clears throat> your Majesties, Your Highnesses, Your Excellencies, friends, all protocol observed. Just days ago, I was on the melting ice of Antarctica. Not long before, I was among the melting glaciers of Nepal. These two spots are far in distance, but united in crisis. Polar ice and glaciers are vanishing before our eyes, causing a walk the world over, from landslides and floods to rising seas. But this is just one symptom of the sickness bringing our climate to its knees a sickness only you, global leaders, can cure. Excellencies, Earth's vital signs are failing. Record emissions, ferocious fires, deadly droughts, and the hottest year ever. We can guarantee it, even we are still in November. We are miles from the goals of the Paris Agreement and minutes to midnight for the 1.5 degree limit. But it is not too late. We can, you can, prevent planetary crash and burn. We have the technologies to avoid the worst of climate chaos if we act now. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has chartered a clear path to the 1.5 degree world. But we need leadership, cooperation, and political will for action and we need it now. It's true, our world is unequal and divided. As we see in this region, conflicts are causing immense suffering and intense emotion. We just had the news that the bombs are sounding again in Gaza. And climate chaos is fanning the flames of injustice. Global heating is busting budgets, ballooning food prices, appending energy markets, and feeding a cost of living crisis. But climate action can flip the switch. And renewable energy is the gift that keeps on giving. It's good for our planet, our health, and our economies, cleaning our hair, meeting the world's growing energy demand, connecting millions of people to affordable electricity, bringing stability and security to markets and saving money as renewable energy has never been cheaper. Excellencies, friends, the diagnosis is clear. The success of the COP depends on the global stock take prescribing a credible cure in three areas. First, drastically cutting emissions. Current policies would lead to an earth scorching 3 degree temperature rise. So the global stock take must set clear expectations for economy-wide national determined contributions presented by all countries that cover all greenhouse gases and align with 1.5 degree limit. The G20, which represents 80% of the world's emissions, must lead. And I urge countries to speed up their net zero timelines to get there as close as possible to 2040 in developed countries and 2050 in emerging economies. 
Second, we cannot save a burning planet via fire holes of fossil fuels. We must accelerate a just, equitable transition to renewables. The science is clear. The 1.5 degree limit is only possible if we ultimately stop burning all fossil fuels. Not reduce, not abate, phase out with a clear time frame aligned with 1.5 degrees. And the global stock take must not only commit to that, it must also commit to triple renewables, double energy efficiency, and bring clean energy to all by 2030. The economics are clear. The global shift to renewables is inevitable. The only question is how much heating our planet will endure before it happens. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change is recommending ending our addiction to coal by 2030 in OECD countries and 2040 for the rest of the world. At the same time, according to the International Energy Agency, the oil and gas industry accounts for just 1% of clean energy investment. So allow me to have a message for fossil fuel company leaders. Your old road is rapidly aging. Do not double down on an obsolete business model. Lead the transition to renewables using the resources you have available. Make no mistake, the road to climate sustainability is also the only viable pathway to economic sustainability of your companies in the future. And I urge governments to help industry make the right choice by regulating, legislating, putting a fair price on carbon, ending fossil fuel subsidies, and adopting a windfall tax on profits. Excellencies, third, climate justice is long overdue. Developing countries are being devastated by disasters they did not cause. Extortionate borrowing costs are blocking their climate action plans. And support is far too little, far too late. The global stock take must commit to a surge in finance, including for adaptation and loss and damage. And it must support reform of the multilateral development banks to leverage far more private finance at reasonable costs for developing countries in climate action. And developed countries must show how they will double adaptation finance to 40 billion US dollars a year by 2025, as promised, and clarify how they are delivering on the 100 billion US dollars as promised. Excellencies, the climate challenge is not just another issue in your inbox. Protecting our climate is the world's greatest test of leadership. And so I urge you to lead. Humanity fate hangs in the balance. Make this COP count. Make this COP a game changer. Make this COP the renewal hope in the future of humankind. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Secretary General. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for us to turn ambition into action, to share insight on how to move forward together. Please welcome a true champion of the environment, His Majesty, King Charles III. Highness, Secretary General, Your Majesties, Your Royal Highnesses, Presidents, Prime Ministers, Ministers, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan for his warm invitation 
to speak to you at the opening of COP28. Eight years ago, I was most touched to be asked to speak at the opening of COP21 in Paris, which of course culminated in the Paris Agreement, a landmark moment of hope and optimism when nations put differences to one side for the common good. I pray with all my heart that COP28 will be another critical turning point towards genuine transformational action at a time when already, as scientists have been warning for so long, we are seeing alarming tipping points being reached. I've spent a large proportion of my life trying to warn of the existential threats facing us over global warming, over climate change and biodiversity loss. But I was not alone. For instance, Sheikh Mohammed's dear father, Sheikh Zayed, was advocating for clean energy at a time even before the United Arab Emirates as such came into being. All these decades later, and despite all the attention, there is 30% more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere now than there was back then, and almost 40% more methane. Some important progress has been made, but it worries me greatly that we remain so dreadfully far off track as the global stock take report demonstrates so graphically. The dangers are no longer distant risks. I have seen across the Commonwealth and beyond countless communities which are unable to withstand repeated shocks whose lives and livelihoods are laid waste by climate change. Surely, real action is required to stem the growing toll of its most vulnerable victims. Repeated cyclones batter vulnerable island nations like Vanuatu and Dominica. India, Bangladesh, and Pakistan have been experiencing unprecedented floods and East Africa is suffering a decades-long drought. This past summer, in common with Spain, Greece, the United States, and many other countries, Canada experienced its most severe wildfire season on record, with 18 and a half million hectares of land burned, causing terrible loss of life and property, and of course, releasing enormous amounts of greenhouse gases that contribute to dangerous feedback loops to which climate scientists have been alerting us for decades. As I've tried to say on many occasions, unless we rapidly repair and restore nature's unique economy based on harmony and balance, which is our ultimate sustainer, our own economy and survivability will be imperiled. Records are now being broken so often that we are perhaps becoming immune to what they are really telling us. When we see the news that this last Northern Hemisphere summer, for instance, was the warmest global average temperature on record, we need to pause to process what this actually means. We are taking the natural world outside balance norms and limits and into dangerous uncharted territory. We are carrying out a vast, frightening experiment of changing every ecological condition all at once at a pace that far outstrips nature's ability to cope. As we work towards a zero carbon future, we must work equally towards being nature positive. With what we are witnessing, our choice now is a starker and darker one. How dangerous are we actually prepared to make our world? Dealing with this 
is a job for us all. Change will come by working together and making it easier to embrace decisions that will sustain our world, rather than carry on as though there are no limits or as though our actions have no consequences. As you gather, ladies and gentlemen, for these critical negotiations, the hope of the world rests on the decisions you must take. I can only encourage you to consider some practical questions which might inform the task ahead of you. Firstly, how can our multilateral organizations, which were established at a different time for different challenges, be strengthened for the crisis we face? How can we bring together our public, private, philanthropic, and NGO sectors ever more effectively so that they all play their part in delivering climate action, each complementing the unique strengths of the others? Public finance alone will never be sufficient, but with the private sector firmly at the table and a better, fairer international financial system, combined with the innovative use of risk reduction tools like first loss risk guarantees, we could mobilize the trillions of dollars we need in the order of four and a half to five trillion a year to drive the transformation we need. Secondly, how can we ensure that finance flows to those developments most essential to a sustainable future and away from practices that make our world more dangerous across every industry in every part of the world? I have, for instance, been heartened by some of the steps taken by parts of the insurance sector, which plays such a vital role in incentivizing more sustainable approaches and providing an invaluable source of investment to reduce the risks we face. Thirdly, how can we accelerate innovation and the deployment of renewable energy, of clean technology and other green alternatives to move decisively towards investment in this vital transition across all industries. For instance, how can we increase investments in regenerative agriculture, which can be a nature-positive carbon sink? What incentives are necessary? And how can those which have a perverse impact be eliminated with all due speed? Fourthly, how can we bring together different solutions and initiatives to ensure coherent long-term approaches across sectors, countries, and industries. For virtually every artificial source of greenhouse gas emissions, there are alternatives or mitigations which can be put in place. That is why it is encouraging to see industry transition plans being developed both nationally and globally, which will help each sector of our global economy onto practical pathways to a zero carbon nature positive future. And ladies and gentlemen, fifthly, how can we forge an ambitious new vision for the next 100 years? How can we draw on the extraordinary ingenuity of our societies, the ideas, knowledge, and energy of our young people, our artists, our engineers, our communicators, and importantly, our indigenous peoples to imagine a sustainable future for people everywhere, a future that is in harmony with nature, not set against her. Ladies and gentlemen, in your hands is an unmissable opportunity to keep our common hope alive. I can only urge you to meet it with ambition, imagination, and a true sense of the emergency we face and together with a commitment to the practical action upon which our shared future depends. After all, ladies and gentlemen, in 2050, our grandchildren won't be asking what we said. They will be living with the consequences of what we did or didn't do. So if we act together to safeguard our precious planet, the welfare of all our people will surely follow. And we need to remember, too, that the indigenous worldview teaches us 
teaches us that we are all connected, not only as human beings, but with all living things and all that sustains life. As part of this grand and sacred system, harmony with nature must be maintained. The earth does not belong to us, we belong to the earth. Thank you, Your Majesty. And now, please help me welcome to the stage the leader of Brazil and COP30 host nation, His Excellency Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva. Alteza Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, Presidente dos Emirados Árabes, Sua Majestade Rei Carlos III, Senhor Secretário-Geral das Nações Unidas, Excelências, Presidentes e Chefes de Estados. Uma mulher africana, a queniana Vangari Matai, Vencedora do Prêmio Nobel da Paz, sintetizou bem o dilema da humanidade em sua relação com a natureza. Disse ela, a geração que destrói o meio ambiente não é a geração que paga o preço. O painel intergovernamental sobre mudanças climáticas alertou que temos somente até o final desta década para evitar que a temperatura global ultrapasse um grau e meio acima dos níveis pré-industriais. 2023 já é o ano mais quente dos últimos 125 mil anos. A humanidade sofre com secas, enchentes, ondas de calor cada vez mais extremas e frequentes. No norte do Brasil, a Amazônia amarga uma das mais trágicas secas de sua história. No sul, Tempestades de ciclones deixam um rato inédito de destruição. A ciência e a realidade nos mostram que, desta vez, a conta chegou antes. O planeta já não espera para cobrar a próxima geração. O planeta está farto de acordos climáticos não cumpridos, de metas de redução de emissão de carbono negligenciadas do auxílio financeiro aos países pobres que não chega, de discursos eloquentes e vazios. Precisamos de atitudes e práticas concretas. Quantos líderes mundiais estão, de fato, comprometidos em salvar o planeta? Somente no ano passado, o mundo gastou mais de 2 trilhões e 224 milhões de dólares em armas, quantias que poderiam ser investidas no combate à fome e no enfrentamento à mudança do clima. Quantas toneladas de carbono são emitidas pelos mísseis que cruzam o céu e desabam sobre civis inocentes, sobretudo crianças e mulheres famintas. A conta da mudança climática não é a mesma para todos e chegou primeiro para as populações mais pobres. O 1% mais rico do planeta emite o mesmo volume de carbono que 66% da população mundial. Trabalhadores do campo que têm suas lavouras de subsistência devastadas pela seca e já não podem alimentar suas famílias. Moradores das periferias das grandes cidades que perdem o pouco que têm quando a enchente arrasta tudo, casas, móveis, animais de estimação e seus próprios filhos. A injustiça que penaliza as gerações mais jovens é apenas uma das faces 
das desigualdades que nos aflige. O mundo naturalizou disparidades inaceitáveis de renda, de gênero e de raça. Não é possível enfrentar a mudança do clima sem combater a desigualdade. Quem passa fome tem sua existência aprisionada na dor do presente e torna-se incapaz de pensar no amanhã. Reduzir vulnerabilidades socioeconômicas significa construir resiliência frente aos eventos extremos. Significa também ter condições de redirecionar esforços para a luta contra o aquecimento global. Em 2009, quando participei da COP15 em Copenhague, a arquitetura da Convenção do Clima estava à beira do colapso. As negociações fracassaram e foi preciso um grande esforço para recuperar a confiança e chegar ao Acordo de Paris em 2015. Ao retornar à presidência do Brasil, constato que estamos hoje em situação semelhante. O não cumprimento dos compromissos assumidos corrói a credibilidade do regime. É preciso resgatar a crença no multilateralismo. É inexplicável que a ONU, apesar de seus esforços, se mostre incapaz de manter a paz simplesmente porque alguns dos seus membros lucram com a guerra. É lamentável que acordos como o Protocolo de Kyoto de 1997 ou os Acordos de Paris de 2015 não sejam implementados. Governantes não podem se eximir de suas responsabilidades. Nenhum país resolverá seus problemas sozinho. Estamos todos obrigados a atuar juntos, além de nossas fronteiras. O Brasil está disposto a liderar pelo exemplo. Ajustamos nossas metas climáticas, que são hoje mais ambiciosas do que as de muitos países desenvolvidos. Reduzimos drasticamente o desmatamento na Amazônia e vamos zerá-lo até 2030. Formulamos um plano de transformação ecológica para promover a industrialização verde, a agricultura de baixo carbono e a bioeconomia. Forjamos uma visão comum com os países amazônicos e criamos pontes com outros países detentores de florestas tropicais. O mundo já está convencido do potencial das energias renováveis. É hora de enfrentar o debate sobre o ritmo lento da descarbonização do planeta e trabalhar por uma economia menos dependente de combustíveis fósseis. Temos de fazê-lo de forma urgente e justa. Vamos trabalhar de forma construtiva com todos os países para pavimentar o caminho entre essa COP28 e a COP30 que sediaremos no coração da Amazônia. Não existe dois planetas Terra. Somos uma única espécie chamada humanidade. Todos almejamos tornar o um mundo capaz de acolher com dignidade a totalidade de seus habitantes, e não apenas uma minoria privilegiada, como nos convida o Papa Francisco na encíclica Todos Irmãos. Precisamos conviver na fraternidade. Muito obrigado. Obrigada, President Lula. And now, please join me in welcoming the co-founder and environmental director of Brazil's Instituto Zagi, an indigenous youth-led organization dedicated to reforestation and preservation of traditional knowledge, Ms. Isabel Prestes da Fonseca. Ali Makemo, Utate, Utamentate, 
Eu vos saúdo, vossas realeza, majestade, senhores e senhoras. Eu sou Isabel Gacran, uma guardiã, junto com a minha família, da terra indígena Laclanô Choclém, Brasil. Eu estou aqui hoje como uma mulher indígena, como uma mãe, uma irmã, um ser humano que vive nessa terra, como vocês e com vocês. Todos os dias eu testemunho o que, tudo o que está acontecendo. Com muita tristeza, toda a devastação de no, da nossa floresta, apenas 2% do nosso território sagrado, do nosso bioma, sobrevive hoje. E a árvore Zang, a nossa árvore ancestral, chamada Araucária, com milênios de vida, está à beira da extinção. Nossos antepassados preveram isso, alertaram-nos sobre o futuro e que o mundo precisaria do nosso conhecimento. Hoje, enfrentamos desequilíbrios ambientais, catástrofes climáticas. Os rios estão secando, as montanhas estão desmoronando e o jeito de árvores. Não estamos mais apenas protegendo o futuro, mas sim agindo no agora, já. Em nome das vidas indígenas, da floresta e da biodiversidade, junte-se a nós nessa luta. Nós somos a natureza tentando se defender. Este é um chamado para a ação. Não podemos mais adiar. Unidos, restauraremos a nossa Mãe Terra. Preservaremos o nosso patrimônio e regataremos a harmonia perdida. Nós, do Instituto Zag, não pedimos apenas apoio, pedimos companheirismo. Convido cada um a unir-se a essa missão e tornar-se parte dessa jornada. Pela regeneração da natureza, e da vida. Juntos vamos preservar não apenas a Utamenta T. Obrigada. Muito obrigada, Miss Prestes da Fonseca. Ladies and gentlemen, We are truly humbled to host you in the United Arab Emirates. May these coming days bring us together in collective action. If we take one thing away from today's ceremony, let it be that we have gathered here from around the world with the same goal, to unite, to act, and to deliver. And so we must welcome to the COP of Action. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. Please remain seated until the heads of state have left the theater. All gold badges holders will be able to exit the theater from the rear of the theater. Kindly follow the ushers and thank you for joining us today at the World Climate Action Summit at COP28.